uh, for both of you, um, I'm very interested in selecting the right metrics to present. So this is a big topic. Uh, Lauren, you touched on it with your change. Perhaps you could share with us um, how you suggest folks on RevOps teams at SaaS companies, uh, how they work on whittling down the list because they can't show everything. So how do they, how do they pick and choose? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the fundamental message is that the board reporting should follow a narrative and a story. And it's different at different stages of the company. So it's both the stage of the company and then also the goals of the company, because the board's job is to provide the sort of outside in management of the company and make sure that it's moving towards its its goals and not get caught up in the you know day-to-day -day tactical kind of things but see what the results of that and whether you're making that forward you know movement towards the goal so in in an early stage it's really about making sure that the company is um, you know finding that product market traction um, or product market fit and customer traction. So they're going to be looking more at, you know, conversion rates for customers. They're going to look at engagement through Google Analytics um, with the product. They're going to be looking at, and then of course, the major thing in the early stage is cash flow. You know, is there enough money? What's the um, runway? Is there a need to start the process for funding? Because you can't, when you're going to run out of money in three months, you can't start, you know, the whole process right then. So those are kind of the core things. And then at the growth stage, you're looking at, you know, you should have found a product market fit and some customer traction. So now you're starting to look at retention rates and you're starting to look at also, you know, the growth. So month to month or quarter to quarter or year over year growth rates, new customer ads, those kind of differentiation of, of numbers like new versus renewal versus expansion are all metrics that are really important and to see that over time um and of course cash flow still is important and then when you get into the enterprise stage it's more about you have all these employees and that's a huge cost it's a huge asset it's a huge you know value of your company so you're looking much more at employee productivity and employee retention rates. And in the current market that we're talking about, everybody's board and every company in the tech space that I know of is looking at, you know, how many open recs, how long, you know, what's the time it takes to hire somebody and get them started? Um, how many, there's new metrics out there like um, new hires that have left within the first 90 days. So that's a good indicator of um, it, both your hiring process, whether you're hiring the right people, right fit, and also whether you're, you know, supporting them properly. With the so those are the kind of things. And then you get into an acquisition or, you know, or you're moving towards selling the company or you're moving towards IPO. You want to be telling the story of how are you progressing to get there. So again, what are the metrics that you need to show that story and then working backwards is what, what I've seen. Oh, that's so interesting. How about for you, Kate? Well, Lauren, you really summed it all up from all the different stages. So I am to, I'm focused on always the sales part of the, of the board deck. So just going off of what Lauren said is, you know, in growth mode, it's the trends, right? It's the, the top line trends of ARR and retention of customers. Um, even going into like sales cycle and average selling price as you're starting to start planning for the next year. So like typically uh, we would have those stats in, but towards the end of the year, it's kind of the recap of how we're, how you're seeing that progression and, and where you think you're going to go in the following year. Um, and even uh, beyond metrics a little bit is um, programs, like any programs, because you always have the past board meetings, right? And the board slides. And you, you have to remember what you presented on back then because you have to present on them again, unless you're going to do a pivot, which for anyone that's been in that position, it's a scary thing as an analyst because you, you have to tell the story about why you're now going to change. Like for example, we looked at a particular set of industries that in verticals we were targeting. 
we decided to shift them a little bit. So then you have to plan out what that looks like and then how you start to tell the story around why you're doing that. What are the metrics that help you tell that story? Because everything has to have metrics around it. It yeah. can't just be a story. You have to show them why and then what you're going to do. Um, and I think the other part of metrics too is like if you're trending and you actually are, are having incredible growth in an area, you're seeing something really good, you got to tell them why and you have to make sure you can then continue to repli rep replicate that or you have to make sure that you're saying here's some risk areas of like we think this was an anomaly because of COVID or but even on a downward trend you also have to figure out why you're seeing that downward trend and what you're going to do to then fix that um, which can be programs or training or you know all sorts of areas investment in software technology um, so there's more metrics that go on top of it based on the trending that you're seeing and then um, you know, then if you're like launching new products and it's about innovation and what that looks like, and then NPS can be start to be involved in it. If when you start asking your customers about, you know, would they recommend you? And um, so it can really have a spider effect, but it's making sure that you're, it all is about that story and the metrics that tell that story. Because if you're in a, a company meeting, you go deep on details sometimes. At the board meeting, you have to stay really high level and you don't want to go too deep. Um, you just you want to tell the say the right things with the backup of the metrics but kind of keep it more high level because remember they're not the same audience that you remember you, that you talk to every single day where they're gonna you know they may dig in so in our board slides we have an index of a ton of slides that if they're going to ask that we have this graph to show them why or if they're going to ask about this competitor competitor information has been really big topics in some of my past board meetings of like all right, well, why are we losing to them or why are we winning against them? What does this look like for any new product that we're introducing? Um, so, it, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, but staying high level, making sure what your trends are doing, that you're having backup information on why you're seeing that and if that's going to continue or not. And then just remember that next quarter, you got to remember what you presented on because you have to speak to it again. So, um, so those are all the things that we that I keep in mind and my team keeps in mind as we build these. And, and when you're looking at metrics, it's really backing up the story. And there's proactive metrics where that's your storytelling, but then there's also reactive metrics that you know we'll get notes from the CEO and the COO saying, hey, the board is asking about these specific things. We have to talk about the TAM, like total addressable market, for example, or, or this vertical and how we're doing here is because we talked about it last time, they'd like to see a follow-up on this. Um, so that's, that's the other layer of it is, is what, how can we be proactively telling a story that we want them to know? And then, you know, reactive is what are the things we've done before and how do we continue to tell that story as well? Sure.